Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government, in light of recent ONS figures showing that 218 avoidable child deaths occurred in Scotland in 2017, what progress has been made implementing our child death review process and when this will report? Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman. We are establishing a national hub for the prevention of child deaths, which will launch in March this year. Its focus will be to oversee the child death review process to drive a reduction in child deaths, which will start in full in early 2020. We're cur currently piloting this process in three health board areas with a further two pilots commencing later this year and are investing £1 million from April in this important work. Kenneth Gibson. I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Uh, as you'll be aware, the number of avoidable deaths in Scotland among infants and children is proportionally higher than elsewhere in the UK. The 2017 figures include victims of violence, accidents and birth defects, sometimes linked to smoking and alcohol. Does she agree with that for the parents and those closest to children who have died, it can be particularly traumatic to consider a death to have been avoidable and therefore minimising such fatalities must be an absolute priority? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Mr Gibson for uh, that supplementary and he is right that the number of avoidable deaths among infants and children is proportionately higher in Scotland and elsewhere in the UK. But it is also important to note that since 2008, uh, that number uh, of child deaths under the age of 18 has reduced in Scotland by 32%. But I do agree that minimising avoidable child deaths is a priority for this Scottish Government, as it should be, and we are committed to driving down the rate of child deaths in Scotland by learning from the child death review process uh, and working with uh, the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health to ensure that we get the process right, but most importantly, that we apply the learning uh, across the whole of our health service. Kenneth Gibson. Cabinet Secretary for her further response. Professor Russell Viner, President of the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health, said that the Scottish Government is, and I quote, certainly moving in the right direction by tackling child poverty and obesity. Nevertheless, despite recommending a scotland wide child death review process to be implemented over four years, this is yet to be established. However, I do welcome the 32% reduction in deaths, which the Cabinet Secretary has just mentioned, and the new hub. Does she agree that, that the delay that we've seen over the last few years does imply that avoidable child deaths are not being given the priority that they deserve? And therefore, how will she convince parents and others that the Scottish Government is indeed urgently, urgently addressing this matter? Cabinet Secretary. I'm grateful to Mr Gibson for that important supplementary question. And I understand why people uh, are frustrated uh, at what they feel uh, has been too long a time before the process is fully uh, put in place. Uh, it is a priority for me, it is a priority for the government. We will launch, uh, as I said, in full uh, in a month's time. Uh, we will continue uh, to update the parliament on that process. It really does matter, although we have seen a reduction in the number of child deaths under 18 by 32%, a, number, a reduction in uh, neonatal mortality uh, of 28% and stillbirths uh, reduced by 25% in the last 10 years. Nonetheless, uh, there is more that we need to do and working uh, to establish the hub and to run the pilot processes, introducing those in a staged way so that learning uh, can be replicated across our boards uh, is something that we will take uh, a very close eye on and look to ensure that as we make progress on this in the course of this calendar year that we update the Parliament on how that, uh, that process is progressing in order to reassure people that this really is a priority for this government. Miles Briggs to be followed by Mary Fee. Thank, Thank you, Presiding Officer. It should concern every MSP in this chamber that avoidable deaths among children, babies and teenagers are higher in Scotland than anywhere else in the UK. Now, specifically, I wanted to ask with regards to babies being born with addicted uh, to drugs, because since 2005, figures in uh, November of 2018 showed that 600 babies were born in this situation. So I wanted to ask, in terms of a pre-birth approach, as recommended by Sir Harry Burns, what the Scottish Government are doing to take forward that approach. So uh, much of the work in uh, both the Best Start process, which I know Mr Briggs will be familiar with, our uh, new and uh, innovative and improved approach in terms of maternity care uh, uh, it, and the work that has uh, also been undertaken uh, by Mr Fitzpatrick in terms of the Healthy Weight and uh, Diet programme, looking at uh, preparation for pregnancy, if you like, all of that feeds into 
uh, working with mums and uh, about to be mums about uh, what they need to do to uh, be as healthy as they can be so that their child can be as healthy uh, as it can be when it is born. That also is picked up by uh, our uh, community-based midwives, by our increase in the number of health visitors, all of which comes together to begin to tackle uh, some of the issues that we know uh, women want to address but sometimes can feel, as with smoking uh, in pregnancy, can sometimes feel that it is too much and they're not quite sure where to start. So being able to use those um, healthcare uh, supports through the midwife and then through the health visitor with that important relationship uh, that they can develop uh, with uh, pregnant uh, women and then with uh, new mothers is really important in helping people in a non-judgmental way to make some of the changes that are critical uh, for the uh, healthiest possible birth of those new babies. Mary Fee. Thank you, President Officer. There remains a significant link between material deprivation and life expectancy. Figures released in December revealed that a boy born in the most affluent area can expect to live over 10 years longer than a boy born in the poorest. What specific steps will the Cabinet Secretary and this government take to end the scandal of health inequalities that persist in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. So there are a number of areas of work uh, underway to tackle health inequalities, not all of which, as I'm sure the member appreciates, sit uh, in the health portfolio because uh, inequalities is something that needs to be tackled much more widely. So uh, work alongside, for example, uh, the Baby Box, the new Best Start grant uh, introduced by our new Social Security Agency, all of which is attempting to get practical support uh, into the uh, hands, if you like, of mums and, and babies and uh, small children. Uh, but we're also looking with our deep end practices and again with those community-based healthcare workers, our community mental health workers, link workers and others, about how we can reach uh, all of the population that we need to reach with some of the preventative and improved lifestyle um, approaches that we need people to take. But we need to do it in a way that is where people are, rather than it appearing to be judgmental or lecturing or, or uh, easy for someone like me to say about how you should stop smoking or you should eat more healthily or you should exercise. You know, in, in situations uh, where you are struggling to make ends meet and you have a family to try and uh, bring up as well, um, it can feel just all too much and too impractical. So using, again, those connections with those trusted healthcare workers and others to um, help people identify ways in which, practical ways within their means by which they can make changes and improvements to their lifestyles is a way by which we begin in this portfolio, but more widely across government, to tackle health inequalities. And of course, some of the work in education and elsewhere also plays a part in that. And I think it would be, presiding officer, uh, beneficial uh, at some point, and maybe uh, the member and I can cooperate on this, for us to have a wider debate in this parliament about how we really do tackle health inequalities in the round across our portfolios in government. I'd be very happy to meet uh, the member and to see if we can take that forward. Thank you. Question number two, Daniel Johnson. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on providing legal aid to victims' families for fatal accident inquiries. Minister Ashton. Uh, we acknowledge that the family of the deceased may find attendance at an FAI distressing. The purpose of an FAI is to investigate the circumstances of a death in the public interest. At the FAI, the Procurator Fiscal leads the evidence to address the matters upon which the sheriff must make findings, including the cause of death. Where family members seek their own representation in order to participate as a party to an FAI, applications for legal aid towards the cost of this representation are subject to statutory test of probable cause, reasonableness and financial eligibility. And this is consistent with the statutory test for applications for other forms of civil legal aid. These arrangements were considered during the passage of inquiries into Fatal Accidents and Sudden Death Scotland Act of 2016. However, the Independent Strategic Review of Legal Aid in Scotland 
and recent high-profile cases, including the Clutha FAI, have highlighted that there is a need to review the current legislation with regard to eligibility for families involved in FAIs. And I assure the Parliament that going forward in planning for a new Legal Aid Bill in Scotland, we will consider this issue. The Legal Aid Scotland Act um, was actually in 1986, and that set the regulations that are still in force today. And that is why we set up an independent strategic review of legal aid in Scotland and why we will be consulting on a new legal aid bill for Scotland before the summer recess. Daniel Johnson. Um, I thank the Minister for that answer, but I know that many members will have been shocked, as I was, to learn last week that the Clutha families are being asked to contribute as much as £8,000 for legal representation given the decision of the Legal Aid Board. So I hear what the, the Minister has said about the review, but will the government intervene immediately to reverse this specific decision? But moreover, when it is reviewing it, will, does the government think that the normal means of assessment for legal aid are appropriate in the case of fatal accident inquiries into disasters such as Clutha, given the wider public interest? Yes, sir. Um, due to the statutory uh, regulations that are in place, Scottish ministers cannot intervene to change the decision made by the Scottish Legal Aid Board. Legislation passed by this Scottish Parliament requires contributions to be paid depending on an individual's financial circumstances and contributions reduce the cost of legal aid to the public purse and so help fund vital services. Um, the figures um, that I have seen represented in the media of £8,000 um, for a family is not correct. That's actually um, the cumulative amount of money across all the families. And um, the Scottish Legal Aid Board has exercised the full discretion available to it in order um, to um, make the decision that they have made in this case. Daniel Johnson. And I, th I thank the Minister for that clarification. But I think this question also raises... Uh, issues more broadly with fatal accident inquiries. We've heard in recent weeks issues from families who've uh, had loved ones who've died abroad who still cannot get post-mortems. Other families such as those of Craig McClelland who are frustrated because their murderer committed that murder one side of the prison fence than the other. And I think thank you to the work of the, the Lib Dems. The total cumulative backlog of FAIs is now shocking. So does the Minister accept there is something seriously wrong with the way FAIs are working in Scotland, despite legislative reform only taking place in 2016? Yes. Um, obviously, the decision to hold any fatal accident inquiry and um, the timing for initiating it is a matter entirely for the Lord Advocate, and that is operating entirely independently of government, and I'm sure the member would accept that. Um, and sometimes, depending upon the circumstances of a death investigation, it can be very complicated, it can be technical, and it can also involve a number of different agencies working together. So the Crown Office is committed to the prompt investigation of deaths, but it does accept that in some cases, the time taken in order to complete a thorough investigation has been too long, and they do, uh, they do accept that. So the Scottish Government has made additional funding available to the Crown Office, and the Crown Office has used some of this to allow Scottish Fatalities Investigation Unit to try to reduce the time required to complete um, these death investigations. Liam Kerr to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Sticking with the delays that Daniel Johnson brings up, can the Minister tell us what are the cumulative delays to ongoing FAIs? And what conclusions does she draw from these delays about whether staffing levels at the COPFS are adequate? Slightly broader than the original question, but I'll allow it, Minister. Um, the average, I can um, answer the member's question, the average length, length of time to complete an in, inquiry has been gradually decreasing, and obviously that is um, going in the direction that we would like to see. Um, we're pleased to see that, that, that it is decreasing, but obviously um, we would like to see further progress on that area, and that is why um, the government has made additional funding available to the Crown Office um, in order to um, address this issue, to reduce the amount of time that is required to complete these death investigations. Ian MacArthur. Uh, thank you. Does the Minister agree that the system that makes families wait years to find out um, the circumstances surrounding their loved one's death and ask them to make a financial contribution towards the process 
is broken. Is she aware of recent reports that the family of a victim of the M9 crash was sent a bill by the highways authorities to replace the shrubs damaged at the side of the motorway? Uh, and would she agree it's time for an independent review of FAIs? Minister. Um, I thank uh, the member for raising that point, which uh, I, I think is very important to raise that. And I think um, I would agree that a review is required. So just to reiterate that it is the role of um, the Scottish Legal Aid Board, obviously, to make determinations if legal aid funding is to be awarded. Scottish ministers can't overturn uh, that decision. Um, there isn't flexibility for the board to decide to disapply or disregard the statutory requirements that operate um, to assess an applicant's finances. And any changes to this system can only be made through changes to primary legislation. And that is why uh, we plan to consult on a new legal aid bill. This will be a full consultation and it will be happening this year before um, summer recess. Um, I will carefully consider this issue as part of um, that wider planning for the new Scottish Legal Aid Bill and I would be happy to meet with any members who want to discuss this further and who want to contribute to that bill. Thank you very much and that concludes topical questions. We're going to move on now to the next item of business which is a statement by Jean Freeman on patient safety within the 